the truth about tiny home living. What's up guys, Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, brokers, and investors grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. Look, a tiny home doesn't mean you gotta live in a closet. That was a closet. But I wanna share my story about living in a small space for over four years. That's right guys, I lived in a small space for over four years, just about 500 square feet, and I'm in the same place right now to shoot this video and share my story. But before I share my story with you on how it was living in a small space for over four years, I might as well just show you the space. You got a simple kitchen. Dining and living room. It's basically just a studio setup. King bed. Got two small closets. And your bathroom. Little balcony out here. My goal several years ago was to live at the beach. So I had to do a lot of research to find out inexpensive condos that uh, could essentially put me in this space because of the market and how expensive, how expensive it is to live at the beach. I had to buy small and this is what I got roughly about 500 square feet and completely happy with that purchase. Now I know this isn't the typical tiny home that you see all over the internet and on YouTube of you know a small house being built in the forest. No, this is a condo, it's a small condo in a complex, but at the end of the day, the space is tiny. It's like I said, just about 500 square feet. And uh, I just wanted to give you my, my perception of how it is living in a small space like this. Now when I first moved here, I actually had to downsize from a three bedroom, two bathroom, single family home on a full acre of land. That, the size of it was about 1,600 square feet. It was a cool piece of property, but again, I wanted to move from inland to close to the beach. Now coming from a three bedroom, two bath, 1,600 square foot house on an acre of land, you can only imagine I, I had stuff, I had things. And a lot of things I really didn't use and it really put it all into perspective when I did have to go ahead and downsize into my quote unquote tiny home. So what did I do? I sold my boat, I sold my second car, um, I sold uh, additional stuff that I really didn't need. I donated a lot of clothing, I do donated a bunch of stuff. Uh, I sold furniture, I basically liquidated everything I, I had. So my goal in terms of downsizing and moving into this 500 square foot condo was to downsize and try to have all my personal belongings fit into two suitcases, one large one, one kind of carry-on style, and two backpacks. And one of the backpacks is actually one for um, all of my real estate stuff, my laptop, um, you know, tripods, cameras, and so forth. So I wanted to condense everything I possibly had. The only problem I had, I was, you know, I'm a real estate investor, and, and in most cases, I was doing a lot of the sweat equity labor on these properties, so I had a, accumulated over the years a lot of tools. So it worked out really well. I was able to secure a storage unit on, on site here. Uh, they charge about $400 a year, and I was able to store my tools in this um, little storage unit, so it worked out really well. But going through everything, I realized, you know, there's a lot of things that I had that I haven't used in, you know, six months, a year, even several years back. And I just kept thinking, why do I have this stuff? Why do I have this accumulation of all this stuff that I'm really not using or, or really don't need? So I got rid of everything I really didn't need or if I really wasn't using it within a month's period, I just really had to make that decision. Uh, do I sell it, donate it, or do I keep it? And you know, living in a space like this, two small closets, you really just don't have the space for it. So um, you have to get creative in these spaces. So there's a lot of things you can do with um, getting creative in tiny spaces, which I'll probably do another video on as well, because we actually bought a couple units in here where we had to get creative and uh, create additional drawers and cabinet space and so forth. 
So what was the outcome? For one thing, uh, I would say I became less stressed. I know, you know, living at the beach, I guess is statistically proven that you're gonna be less stressed, so that helped out. But also, you know, it, they always say a, de a cluttered house is a cluttered mind. And, and I really agree with that because, you know, when you start, if you do a good cleanup of your house and you get rid of stuff, you actually have a sense of like freedom. You feel, you feel a lot better. Even when I sold my boat, I can tell you, you know, we always utilize my boat coming from the mainland and we would normally park at the beach anyway. So now that I'm at the beach, I was like, do I really need the boat? And even when I had it, I didn't use it as much as I thought I was gonna use it. And when I wasn't using it, you gotta constantly run those things. So, you know, if I didn't use it for a handful of weeks, I would have to go hook a hose up to it, run it just to make sure everything was circulating and, and gonna run in good shape for, for the future. But I realized it just wasn't worth keeping that boat. The second thing is the cost of living. I know I was able to drastically, just utilities and lawn maintenance and all that kind of stuff that I had to pay for, um, that, that alone reduced my bills by at least 70%. Um, living in, in this 500 square foot, I mean, the average electric bill is like, you know, 60, $65 a month and um, you know water and cable and so forth is included in the HOA fees. So another thing is less maintenance. You know that house that I had, we did renovate it. It was beautiful, but it was a 1950s house. You know, you still had a lot of house to clean on a regular basis. You know, when you're living in 500 square feet, you can clean this place in a half hour as opposed to several hours when you own a house. What about uh, shrubs and lawn maintenance? You know, I wasn't cutting my own lawn, but you know, you still had to do the necessary stuff like killing weeds and, and shrubs and so forth. You had to always power wash the house at least once a year um, and you know, painting and all this additional maintenance that really was relieved when I downsized. Another thing that I got out of it is literally locking up and going. You know, I really, I'm a, I'm a spontaneous person, so I really like to go ahead and get out there and travel and check out new areas. Even if it's a weekend trip on the east coast of Florida, I just like to, you know, on a Friday or a Tuesday or whatever, lock my door and go. You know, when you have, uh, you know, a larger house and you have a lot more responsibilities in terms of making sure that the property is secure. Living in this place, it's so simple, you know, you, you really just, Go out your door, lock it, and you take off and you don't have anything to worry about. To this day, I still live in a fairly small space. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm still on Bonita Beach, but a different condo. That condo is about 850 square feet. I did buy that property strategically just because of revenue wise. I actually lease it out in high season for January, February, March. So it was more of a, an investment choice than anything. Other than that, I would've just stayed in this place. But I was able to get a good deal over there. Uh, it did give me a little bit more space, not saying I necessarily needed it because you know over the years, it really, it, it, I just became one with the space and it really never felt closed in. And I think the beach helped out a lot as well because anytime you feel like you know, you're in closed spaces to be able to get out, walk the beach, I mean, there's something to be said about that as well. Also speaking about leasing that property in high season, I'm gonna do another video of where I actually go during those three months. It was another creative investment choice that I wanna share with you guys as well. I'll put that link below once, uh, once we do that video. And I get it, you might be like, Steve, I have you know, two, three kids, I have pets, and, and it, it'd be really difficult for me to go ahead and downsize. All I'm trying to do is make you start thinking about a handful of things to better your life. Would reducing the size of where you live make your family even closer? Would reducing the cost of your living reduce your stress? What would you do with extra money in your pocket every month? And if you are comfortable in the house that you live in, is there anything that you can go and declutter your house? Because remember, a cluttered house is a cluttered mind, and a cluttered mind makes you more stressed out. So if you are comfortable where you are living today, Go ahead and take a weekend, bring the kids in, bring your whole family in to help you go ahead and organize. Get rid of stuff you don't need. And remember, you can donate to somebody else that really needs certain items. So go through all your stuff, get rid of stuff that you don't need or you don't use. You know, if you haven't touched it in the last 60, 90 days, then you probably don't use it, so get rid of it. All in all, I can tell you, living in 500 square feet for over four years, uh, has been an awesome experience. As mentioned, I really got a lot out of it. I really minimized my 
uh, my, my living circumstances. I live more free than ever. And I encourage you to do the same thing. So if you have questions or comments, do you currently live in a small space? What's your opinion on it? Why don't you comment below, share it with others. And as always, if you got any good information from this, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, and I appreciate the support. Thanks a lot.